What's up everyone? It's Unchained here for Let's Play Perfect Dark HD Part 4. This is the Carrington Villa. I gotta say, this is one of my favorite levels in the game. When I think of this game, I generally think of the first mission and this one. I guess this one because it's just so colorful, so vibrant. And it's got this really crazy, awesome airship. It drops off a bunch of people. Yeah, someone's being taken hostage in this private villa. Some idiot in glasses is just wandering around like she doesn't know where she is. And these really static character models with CMPs are escorting her out. Oh, that's epic. But yeah, this is a really good level. It's, um... It's not really a long one. Most of the game's levels are pretty short. Generally, if you really think about it, most of the uh, the games on the N64 did have some really quick mission structure, like GoldenEye, for example, this game. A um, bunch of the other 007 games, such as World Is Not Enough, T uh, Tomorrow Never Dies, they usually can be beaten pretty quick. This game, <clears throat> honestly, can be speedrun in, like, maybe three hours, not maybe less. I, I don't really try to speedrun this game. I just kind of know where to go. So there's really no point wasting time. I know later on I gotta shoot some snipers, and I don't know if the game lets you see them right now. I don't think so. So I gotta go out the back. Let's protect her there. Alright, walking in the back path. Gotta go through the caves where these people are using their amazing abilities to go prone. And it kind of works for the most part, because aiming in this game is a real chore. Like I said in one of the first videos, it's really great that it's got some dual analog support. But it doesn't make it any easier to aim. No, oh, the sniper's great, though. I love it. Kind of defeated the purpose of using a silent sniper rifle. Everyone knows I'm here already. But that's beside the point. It's, it's okay, because these guys are dumb as a sack of shit. Ugh, I'm getting rich. Alright. This is a long cave system. Ooh, with the sidestep. I love when they do that. That's great. Let's switch over here to the CMP. But yeah, this game also had a co-op campaign. And, oh man, it was just so much fun. I, I think this game just had such a lasting value. Well, back in the day, I don't want to say it has lasting value. Because, I mean, games these days have lasting value. Through multiplayer, achievements, and a bunch of different post-game unlockables. But, I don't know, back in the day of N64, I feel like I was more prone to playing a game for well over its lifespan. I guess just because, well, I guess for a number of reasons. When I was younger, I obviously did have a job and I couldn't afford to buy any games, so I kind of just, uh, you know, I'd get one game and I'd play the hell out of it. Because I just remember back in the day playing, I guess, games like Jet Force Gemini, Goldeneye, um, Perfect Dark, obviously the shooters I wasn't allowed to own, but... You know, I had, I owned, like, Banjo-Kazooie, Mario Kart, Super Smash Brothers, and I just played those games so much. God, I can't hit that guy. Played those games so much, and, uh, I even unlocked everything, got all the Easter eggs. These days, it's like, I'll get a game, <clears throat> I'll enjoy it for, like, a day or two, and I'll beat it, and then I'll just be done with it. And it's disappointing that games don't last longer, and where am I being shot? Oh, you bastard, I forgot about you. Mopped you up. But yeah, back then, I think I appreciated games more because I couldn't get them all the time. And it's just the classic case of don't know what you have until it's gone. Well, not really. It's more of a case of if you have no money, appreciate what you can, can afford or appreciate what you get from your parents. But uh, it kind of sucks being an adult, I gotta say. It definitely sucks. When you have money and you can buy what you want, it kind of gets to that point where it's like, oh, there's really nothing exciting anymore about purchasing stuff. But when you're a kid, it's like, you get all A's on your report card, it's, you know, I can finally get a game now. Oh, that's, that was always my reward. If I got bad grades, I got video games taken away. If I get good grades, then I get a game. Usually if it's all A's, though. There's always a, like, game incentive. Always turn to gaming if anything goes wrong in my education. All gaming's fault. But, nonetheless, I still did just as bad if I got my games taken away. Because then I'd have nothing to do after school and I'd be so damn bored. Actually, well, actually, I think that was kind of the point. To bore myself to death so much that I would be forced to study and forced to get better grades. And I guess it kind of worked. But, oh, when I look back, it's like, damn, that was really annoying. Because there was this other thing my parents wanted to do. They wanted to uh, try to keep me playing games less because I was playing so much. 
and they were like, ah, ha, 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 you only can play two hours a day, and once your two hours are clocked, then we're going to take away your controllers. And I was like, oh, are you kidding me? That's not cool. These days, it's like, you know, it's funny when you're a little kid and you think, you know, will, will I still enjoy the hobbies that I have now, you know, 10 to 15 years in the future? It's like, I still do. I still love doing the same things. Working out, playing video games, snowboarding, all that good stuff. Never gets old. Now, it's pretty easy to get lost on this map, but I think, I think there's like one of the doors in the center here that take you further into the house. It's really a confusing structure. First-person shooters early on were definitely more maze-like. It was hard to find your way around. Obviously, once we got out of the time period of Doom and Quake, the games got a little bit more, I guess, high-end. You know, it wasn't just about finding a key and unlocking a door. It's more about less about, you know, completing an objective, going through a level, listening to a story, watching a cutscene. But I gotta say, they, some of these levels still do kind of have their maze-like structure. Now we need to go underground here, and we need to shut off these water things. I don't know what they are. Ugh, that's right, you guys suck. Alright, I gotta hit A on this one, I think. Yep, okay, the cooling systems, that's what they are. Alright, there should be one more in the next room as far as I'm aware of. Let's see. Any guys in this cave? Yup, of course. But yeah, I love this level, because it just it just feels like there's so many layers to it. There's like that mountain segment where you're sniping, then there's the cave where you're fighting through to the villa, then you get to walk around the villa, then you're in this like underground area, and it's like, ooh, I'm in the pits now. There we go. Objective 3 complete. Now, I think we're saving a hostage, so let's continue on here. That door unlocked after the uh, third objective was completed. Oh, another thing worth noting, I, I'm totally self-aware with my ability to use filler words, well, my inability to form complete sentences without the use of filler words. Um, it, I, it's ironic, too, because I'm a pretty good public speaker. Actually, I've always been told I'm a really good public speaker, but I don't know, when I try to, even, like, if I'm talking, I know this is going to sound weird, if I'm talking to myself, because ever since I was little, I always used to do that. And obviously I'll do it when no one's around, I'm not going to be walking around in public having conversations with myself. But, uh... But yeah, I'm a really good public speaker, but I do tend to say a lot, I say because, and just any filler words I can almost like buy time until I can formulate the thought that I'm trying to make. I'm going to try to stop saying that, I'm going to be more self-aware about it. But, um, see, I did it again, son of a bitch, but it's going to happen a lot. It's going to happen, I'm going to try to avoid it, or at least restrict some of it so it doesn't become irritating. I'm trying to make my Let's Plays as interesting as possible. I know what I look for in Let's Plays, so I'm going to try to portray that in my videos on my channel. Uh, I spend weekends at my girlfriend's apartment, but I, what I might do is I'll do the actual recording at my house, and then I'll upload when I'm over there. So I'll try to upload at least every day to every other day. Um, I'm working on getting a salary job now, and that takes forever, because the job market's just in the toilet. But uh, even if I had a job five days a week, I'd still like to put at least one video up a day. So I want to let you guys know that I'm going to be doing it on a regular basis. And uh, let's see, she's having this interaction with the suit here that was held captive. I forgot this game, it's such a storyline. Such a weird one. But yeah, I'll put up a bunch of random videos. It's going to be kind of a combination of uh, Halo multiplayer, maybe some Darksiders 2, because I, I still need to finish that game. Um, definitely I'm going to finish this Let's Play up. I'm not going to start a Let's Play that I don't finish. Um, I'm thinking of putting up a video with uh, my friend Felix. Uh, his YouTube account's Fel Guam. We're thinking of putting up a video about the top five reasons Halo 4 is dead. And we were going to edit that out and make it really funny, have like kind of a funny nerdy aspect to it, where we kind of cut into me and him playing the game and like raging during certain things. So that's going to take some time, but we will do some interesting videos like that on occasion to keep things, I guess, varied, so I don't do the same kind of type of videos every day, because that just gets dull. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'm done rambling. Uh, stay tuned for part five.